Traveling is an activity that's done since the early times. Now, it's usually incorporated with going to other places to seek the entertainment and recreation that people love. The cruise industry is one of those many factors that delivers that satisfaction to people by offering many recreational activities while in a ship. Enjoying while having a journey it is is surely is pleasurable. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. We are now at the final stage of our first semester. So without further ado, let's now welcome our tourism students from University of the East Manila. No one ugly allowed. Ladies and gentlemen, let's now give the UE Tourism students a big round of applause as they share their knowledge in line with the cruise industry. Jetson Brian Jonko from Palawan. I guess I'm Brian Junko and we'll discuss brief background of the cruise industry and basic of cruise line. Cruise tourism or cruise industry is becoming an increasingly popular leisure choice worldwide. The global cruise industry generates $38 billion a year in a passenger expenditure. It is a fastest growing sector in the tourism industry. Cruise is now well established as one of the most service intensive in the world. We have an incredible state of the art vessel being built each year. A cruise ship and ship passenger used for recreational and leisure voyage. The onboard amenities, attraction, activities, entertainment options are integrated part of the cruise experience. A cruise experience has hybrid satisfaction, excitement, social experience, and safe. But some of the travelers think cruise ship is expensive, elitist, fear, and only for a couple or an older couple only. In the countries of the ocean liners that takes passenger from one point on the globe to another point across the ocean, cruise ship or cruise liner is known by most takes people on board to a round trip for a different duration, from a single day to possibly a week. A cruise ship industry is one of the in-demand jobs for everyone because of the experience and benefits of the industry. There's some major players or companies in the cruise like Royal Caribbean Cruise Line, Carnival Corporation, Star Cruises that until now, they're growing to this industry. Ana Carmela Duazo from Pangasinan. My name is Anna Carmel Eduazo and we're going to continue to tackle about the basic of cruise line. The cruise is a defined package that may include travel to the port of embarkation, an itinerary spanning a defined period of time, an element of inclusive services and facilities, accommodation to a specified standard, and various other services that are available at an extra charge. The inclusive nature of the package will depend on the pricing strategy of the cruise operator. Some operators offer a cruise and stay, or cruise and tour packages that include an additional element at the beginning or end of the cruise in the form of defined period of nights, staying in a hotel, in a resort, or touring in the area. Ultimately, the complexity of the ever-changing guest experience means that cruise brands have developed a sophisticated network to support operations. Jai Jai Villanueva from Tendo, Manila. My name is JJ Villanueva from Tondo, Manila. 
and I'm going to tackle the critical variables of cruise. Critical variables of cruise are about market segmentation, cruise operators, cruise destinations, and the five elements in managing services to provide customer satisfaction. First is the market segmentation, which refers to the practice of dividing target market into unapproachable groups. Next is the definition of cruise operators and cruise destinations. Travel agencies book the flight of their cruise customers, hence travel agents provide brochures to encourage them for an advanced booking. Additionally, cruise can be considered as a destination because it is also known as a floating luxury hotel or resort transportation. Cruise has sailed around the globe for customers. Cruise destinations can be found in Asia, Alaska, Caribbean, Europe, and many more. John Patrick Takluya from Cavite. Hello, I'm Patrick, and to continue, sailing in a vast body of water may be deemed difficult to acquire materials right away. Managing the supplies and services are also a critical factor. It must be carefully planned and assessed by the storage manager and all other persons in charge so that no spoilage or lack of supplies can happen in the whole journey. And speaking of travel, we have distribution systems. They are identified three ways in a cruise market. First are the product and services, those tangible and intangible things that people enjoy. The length of stay could span two months. Recreation and entertainment would bring the fun and relaxation that they want to experience. With that, the customer's identification, where various age groups could board the ship. And the last one, to satisfy the needs as it will bring a great income for the cruise. Now, talking about health, safety, and security, from the Cruise Lines International Association or CLIA, areas of ship must undergo cleaning daily and a whole ship sanitation at every end of the cruise trip. Then, the screening, where every person, a crew member, or a passenger would undergo pre-boarding health screenings for health assessments. Also, medical facilities that must be present inside the ship, open for 24 hours daily with professional people in the field of medicine. Lastly, crew members must receive training in first aid and public health practices. Angelique May Alcala from San Juan City Introducing Cruise Terminologies Knowing this terminology will help you to make your work easier, especially when you're working in this industry. Atrium, an interior multi-deck open area of a ship. Alcohol on board, alternative restaurant, Anchor, Atoll. Bird, the dock or the pier where you embark or disembark from the ship. Back-to-back, -back, bridge, bulkhead. Cabin categories. Cabin steward, a person who serves guests or passengers aboard a ship for their daily needs. Kai, sentinel, days at sea, the days during a cruise when the ship does not stop at the port. Dock, dry dock. Embarkation, entering or boarding the ship. Enrichment, excursion, expedition cruise. Family, cabin. A cruise ship cabin that can accommodate more than three passengers. Fleet, flight scene, force majua, funnel, gallery, the ship's kitchen, gangway, gateway, GRP or gross registered carriage, and guarantee cabin. Bade Banag from Laguna. Home port, the port in which a ship is based and most often sails from. Inside cabin, a cabin with no windows or portholes offering a view of the sea or river. Itinerary, 
the route the ship will travel, the tailing arrival and departure times and ports visited. Keel, the ship's backbone extending underneath from the bow to the stern. Knot, a unit of speed equal to one nautical mile. Lifeboat, small boats carried on the ship and used in case of emergency. Lower bed, a single bed placed at the standard height from the floor. MS, abbreviation of motor ship. Maiden voyage, the first sailing of a ship with passengers on board. Midships, in or toward the middle of the ship. Outside cabins, a cabin having a window or porthole offering an exterior view of the sea or river. Portholes, circular windows in the side of the ship. Promenade, it is usually the open walkway that runs almost the entire length of each side of the cruise ship. Purser, in charge of onboard accounts and guest relations. Jody Bautista from City of Manila. Hi, I'm Joe DeBautista and I'm going to talk about letters R to W of cruise terminologies. Repositioning cruises. Cruises operated the MUBA ship between cruise areas. Many of these are operated in the spring and fall as season change and are often offered as shorter 3 to 4 night one way cruises. Shore excursion. Off the ship tours at ports of call for which extra charges usually apply. Tender. A small vessel used to transport passengers to shore when the port stock is not large enough for the cruise ship to access. Upper bed. A single size bed higher from the floor than usual, often recessed into the ceiling or wall during the day. Veranda cabin or balcony cabin. Any cabin accommodation with a private exterior balcony. Wait list. Not a guarantee but the cruise lines endeavor to obtain accommodation for passengers on a first come first serve basis when all cabins are presently sold. Ada Joy Natividad from Quezon Province. way to relax, it is also an amazing doorway to see the world. Hello everyone, my name is Anna Joy Natividad and I'm going to talk about the Asian cruises. The cruise industry in Asia is still growing at an impressive rate especially due to the increasing passenger volume from China according to the Cruise Lines International Association or the CLIA. With this, many cruise lines deploy more capacity to the region, including large cruise ships purposely built for consumers traveling in Asian countries. One of the many cruise lines in Asia is the Star Cruises. It is a cruise line based in Hong Kong and it is owned by the Genting Hong Kong. Star Cruises has been operating its fleet since 1993 with a fleet of four vessels including Superstar Gemini, Superstar Aquarius, Star Pisces, and the Taipan. Another cruise line is the Dream Cruises, the first ever Asian luxury cruise line, which is also owned by the Genting Hong Kong. Dream Cruises was inaugurated in 2016 with a fleet of four vessels, including Genting Dream, World Dream, Global Dream, and Explorer Dream. Avi Vivian Bernales from City of Manila. Asian cruises
Cruises offers a variety of cruise lines that you and your companion will enjoy. One of these is the Regent Seven Seas Cruises that was named as the best luxury cruise line in the Asia Pacific in 2019. It is currently based in Florida that caters to Southeast Asia. And the first one as well to offer an unlimited excursion where you can explore a specific area limitless. They also serve different cuisines such as American, Asian, Italian, and many more. On to the next cruise line, we have the Genting Dream, the Asia's best cruise ship on the same year. This cruise line will help you explore the beauty of Asia, experience an unforgettable adventure, and feel the culture that you've never felt before. Unpack once, explore the other side of the world, and create memories for a lifetime on your Asian cruise line. Exia Fate Sereno from Takloba. Good day everyone, my name is Eliza Faith Sereno and I will be discussing the American Cruise Lines. American Cruise Lines ships exclusively in the USA, including Alaska, West and East Coast, along the USA's biggest rivers, and also in Florida. One of the most prominent features of all American Cruise Line ships is that they are all U.S. flagged. So how long has American Cruise Lines been in the business? Well, American Cruise Lines was incorporated in the year 1991. How many ships has American Cruise Lines have? Their 13 ship fleet includes modern river boats, classic paddle wheelers, small coastal ships, all of which can accommodate 100 up to 190 passengers. Who owns American Cruise Lines? A fun fact, at the helm of the small ship, American flag line is Charles A. Robertson. He is the chairman and the CEO who founded this river line in 1991. Although he's been involved in the marine time industry since the mid-1970s. Nina Andrea Del Vega from Pasig City. And let me introduce you to the different ships in American Cruise Line. First, we have the Queen of the West Cruise, which was built in 1995 at Nichols Bros Boat Builders for American West Steamboat Company. Next, we have Oceana Cruises, which is based in Miami, Florida, and is known for its long cruises that last up to 195 days. Next, we have Bahamas Paradise Cruise Line, which operates two-day voyages out of West Palm Beach, Florida. Next, we have the Disney Cruise Line, a cruise line operation that is a subsidiary of the Walt Disney Company. Three ships will join the fleet in 2022, 2024, and 2025. The first ship was revealed to be named Disney Wish. Next, we have Seaborn Cruise Line an American ultra luxury cruise line that is headquartered in Seattle, Washington. Lastly, we have Regent Seven Seas Cruises, which is formerly known as Radisson Seven Seas Cruises, which is headquartered in Miami, Florida. Hanabe De Vera from Tarla. Good day everyone, my name is Hannah May Debera and my topic is about European cruise line. The life in the cruise has no boring moments. There is a wide range of entertainment programs throughout the day on board. If you choose to stay inside the boat or you have to option of taking the European cruise line, 
immerse yourself in the incredible history, culture, cuisine, and undeniable beauty of the old world on the celebrity European crucifixion. Trust me, it was astonishing to see how it looked from inside. Francesca Mian Cariño from Pangasinan. on a cruise ship is a pleasure you can't miss. Hola, my name is Francesca Marian Carino and I am going to talk about European cruises. There's a lot of things you can enjoy in a European cruise like MSC Road Europa, Princess Cruises, and Celebrity Cruises. You can experience luxury staterooms, services, cuisines as you discover Athens, Limassol, Rhodes, Santorini, Mykonos, and a whole lot of Europe. From different cuisines to diverse cultures, every region of Europe has something different to offer. Just like European cruises. They knows de la Torre from Bulacan. Cruise International Association, CLIA. It was established in 1975. CLIA is the world's largest cruise trade industry of providing a unified voice and leading authority of the global cruise community. CLIA supports policies and practices that foster safe, secure, healthy, and sustainable ship environment and is dedicated to promoting the cruise travel experience. Uh, the organization's global third quarters are in Washington, D.C and with regional offices located in North and South America, Australia, Asia, and Europe. And CLIA's mission, the first mission of CLIA, is to represent more than 95% of global cruise community. The second mission, so as a global organization, it fosters its members' success by advocating, promoting, and educating the common interests of the cruise community. Third, as key suppliers and partners of the cruise lines, executive partners play a major role in the successful operations of cruising, including ports and destinations, ship development, suppliers, and business services. Arjem Cristal Salvador from Nueva Ecija. My topic is all about advocacy, regulations, and regulatory authorities of CLIA. Did you know that the cruise industry is one of the most heavily regulated industries with robust, clearly defined standards? The average ship undergoes dozens of announced and unannounced safety inspections per year, involving hundreds of man hours and the implementation of thousands of specific requirements set by international maritime organization and other authorities. These regulatory authorities set comprehensive standards for safety, security, crew member protection, health, and environmental performance. International regulations include the IMO, International Labor Organization, and the World Health Organization. Also, Agencies such as U.S. Coast Guard, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and the Environmental Protection Agency have full authority to regulate and enforce compliance for ships entering or departing from U.S. ports. Emily De Los Reyes from Palenzuela City. I'm Emily De Los Reyes and I'm going to talk about the inspection, enforcement, security, and safety at the sea. Cruise ships are subject to three robust layers of enforcements and inspections of international law and other requirements. 
various port states that are visited by a cruise ship and has full authority to make sure that it follows the regulations. Next is countries of registration and classification of societies. Ensuring that cruise ships are in compliance with applicable standards and manage responsibly. For Crew Line International Association and its Crew Line member, the safety of the guests and its crews are highest priority and fundamental to operations. When ensuring the safety at the sea, crew members receive training in safety, security, and first aid to prevent and respond to potential emergency situations. Ships are heavily scrutinized and they are improved by reviewing operational procedures. And ships must equip with enough survival craft. Crew ships are one of the safest vacation options in the world. So for ensuring the security of the sea, ships follow comprehensive security protocol prior to departure and at the sea. From passengers to crews and to baggage, they must pass through rigorous security checkpoints. Security personnel are well trained and on call for 24 7 and prohibited items are not permissible without a valid reason. Angelica Baldemaro from San Mateo Rizal. Hello everyone. My name is Angelica Baldemaro and I'm here to talk about the leisure and recreation in cruise ship. A cruise ship is a passenger ship used for recreational and leisure voyages in which the journey is stopped and onboard amenities, attraction, activities, and entertainment options are an integrated part of the cruise ship experience. From the crystal waters of the sea to the wind that pass by as you view the magnificent partisan, we welcome you to our presentation. Are you ready to have fun, to have the relaxation and entertainment that you wanted? Well, Cruz got it for you. Specific example would be theater and drama that include puppetry, plays and acting, dance group singing and musical bands, outdoor activities such as swimming, social activities that include things such as party, and physical activities that include games and sports. There is plenty of activities to do on a cruise for adrenaline junkies. No matter where you are, adventurous sales, onboard activities are practically limitless and ships are buzzing with excitement 24-7. Whether passengers are looking for a one-of-a-kind dining experience or want to enjoy an evening of a spectacular live performance. Mark Alec Paliso from Marikina Good day, my name is Mark Alec Paliso and today I will be talking about recreational and leisure activities. Recreation and leisure are terms that often used interchangeably. Recreational is an individual's preferred, pleasurable and enjoyable activities in which they engage during leisure time. Leisure time or any free time can be used to pursue personal interests. An average cruiser spends about $222 per day, including $168 for the ticket and $53 for the daily onboard spending. Fortunately, you don't have to be an average cruiser. These days, top cruise companies are showcasing innovative entertainment and technology to ensure their guests have an incredible experience on board. A cruise, however, brings meaning to the cliché, getting there is half the fun. Cruise activities are varied and exciting. For the most vacation, the real fun doesn't begin until reaching the destination. Dozens of daily cruise activities at sea entertains, educate, and accelerate passengers of all ages. There's hundreds of activities to do in cruise, including extreme water slides, speedy zip lines, rock climbing, and many more. Mary Joy Rosario from Quezon City. Good 
Good day everyone! I am Mary Joy M. Rosario and today we are going to talk about recreational operation. So, what is recreational operation? Recreational operation, as we all know, involves different cruise ships, activities, on board and off board. It includes entertainment like Broadway, classical, musical, live shows, youth clubs, nightclubs, and recreational activities where you can be active as much as you want to be. You can splash it up in a fresh water pools, aqua play areas, water slides, or you can just relax and treat yourselves to spa therapies and magical makeovers at the salon. If you want to keep ship ship while at sea, then thanks to expansive fitness centers offering the latest weight machines and exercise classes. So now, are you excited to try these different activities? I am too. If you are, then I will be waiting for you. See you there! Lawrence Juniso from Manila Recreation operation oversees the operation of any of the following onboard recreational areas such as water parks, bungee, bowling, rock climbing, or sports courts. They need to ensure a safe and efficient operation and have the ability to deal with adults and children alike in order to consistently exceed guest expectations and provide the highest level of products and services, additional duties and responsibilities may be assigned as needed. They are also responsible for safe and efficient operation of the corresponding recreation venue. Reports any incidents to the assistant cruise director immediately. Understand and enforce the guidelines for safe and recreation venues and in any personal protective equipment related to the position and use of it accordingly. So, what are y'all waiting for? Let's have the best time and experience of our lives. Let's go! Maridel Abanador from Quezon City. Greetings everyone, I am Maridel Abanador, the future flight attendant of Quezon City. For the last topic is about other cruise operations. These are the management who operates and handles employees or crew staff in every aspect of operations inside the cruise. In a ship requires a medical team. A principal medical officer or PMO is supported by as many medical officers or doctors as are required. In case you didn't know, some ships have more on board. That's right. Next department, providing top quality entertainment aboard, a cruise ship is what certainly what many passengers want to see. A cruise ship needs entertainment staff of all kinds. The cruise director, who is usually an experienced professional from the world of entertainment, leads this department. Another is hotel department. Depending on the scale and size of operations, the hotel service team usually dominates in terms of numbers of employees. An individual with the title of hotel manager, director of hotel services, Passenger Services Director or PSD or Executive Purser is usually in charge of the department. Once again, I am Marda Labanador at your service. Kairame Bagaforo from Bataan. Marie Bagaforo from Bataan, your future flight attendant. I'm going to introduce to you the other cruise operations. Number one, deck department. Their responsibilities are the safe navigation of the vessel plus all safety and security aspects of the ship operations, including guests, officers, crew, and staff members, also the non-mechanical portions of the ship. They have four navigating officers, captain, First officer, second officer, third officer, and cadet, a training navigational officer. Number two, engine department. They are also called the technical officers. Operates 
maintains and repair engines, boilers, pumps, generators, and other machinery and system crucial to a vessel's operation. They have four engine officers, chief engineer, second engineer, third engineer, and engine cadet, a trainee on board. They also have oiler and HVAC engineer. HVAC means heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Number three, radio department. To receive, record, and update time, signals, check weather reports, and carrying out and receiving all the information at the ship for smooth sailing of the ship and its vessels. Also, for the satellite hookups, the chief radio officer has three stripes, which are gold and green. And that completes the final leg of this semester. We congratulate everyone for their talents, intelligence, effort, and determination. Of course, we would like to thank Dr. Francisco Ramos for guiding us all throughout this semester. We thank you for helping us to develop our camaraderie and our skills. Thank you everyone for staying with us. Once again, we are the third year tourism students of University of the East, Manila.